We should be having financial miracles on a daily basis. We should be having surprises, signs and wonders happening in our life on a daily basis. We should be surprised, shocked, blessed on a daily basis. In fact, on a daily basis, on a daily basis, on a daily basis, the children should have what proves to them that they belong to God. The miraculous is expected to be asked on a regular basis. And because we don't live by the principles that God gives us, that's the reason we are struggling with things which we're not supposed to be struggling about. So, Tony Bible to the book of John chapter 2, which records in the account of John, the first miracle that was recorded for Jesus on John's account. Now, this is the principle because you will find that the people contained in this did not have to struggle, they did not have to fight, they did not have to beg, they did not have to fast for too long. In simple act of following the leading and the instructions of Jesus Christ, these people received miracles. It says, and the fourth day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Somebody related to Jesus was in the wedding, was in the marriage. But not only was somebody related to Jesus there, amazingly, Jesus was also in the meeting. And Jesus, and what Jesus was called, and his disciples to the same marriage. So the family of Jesus were there. So you, you, you look at this simple reality. Jesus is everywhere you are. Jesus is in the place where your needs are going to come from. Jesus is in the place of your want. Jesus is in the place of your expectation. He is a very present help in trouble. The place where you need God most is where God is present. The place where you will ever need Him most, the place of your trouble, the place of your lack, the place of your pain, the place of your being diseased, the place of your being attacked. The Bible says, Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. If there is any place you can have a guaranteed presence of God, it's in the bad places, it's in the wrong places, it's in the negative places, it's in the challenging places, it's, it's, it's in the difficult places. Few of us think we can only find the presence of God in church, but this is a very present help in trouble. Even when you go out of church, when you are in, in, big, in a big mess, that's where mercy shows up. In your blindness, that's where your vision, that's where the light shows up. In your hunger, that's where the bread of life shows up. In your thirst, that's where the rivers of living water shows up. In your death situation, that's where the restoration and the life shows up. It's in the midst of your trouble that he is manifested. Not just it was Mary invited, but Jesus was called. Jesus showed up in the same way. Praise God. Amen. Now the Lord is going to show up in your life in the place where you need it most. Amen. So when there is so much money in your pocket, you probably wouldn't even know he's there. It's in the season of your lack and in the season of your nothingness that he shows up to make those things that are nothing to be something. He chooses the foolish things of the world to confirm the wise. He chooses the nothing to confirm the somethings. So he said, the time when you think that you're a nobody, when you think that you're a failure, when you think that there's nobody by your side, when you think you have nobody, the, back, the guy, the man by the pool of the for 38 years, he looked at Jesus and said, I have no man. At the time you think you've got nobody, that's where Jesus shows up. Because there is going to be a need in your life, Jesus shows up. Because there's going to be a want in your life. Jesus shows up. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. My wants get eliminated because the shepherd shows up. In the presence of the shepherd, my wants disappear. In the presence of the shepherd, my needs vanish. Jesus is always going to show up. And he's in our lives today. He's in my life today. He's in your life today. He's in your brother's life today. He's in your dreams and he's in your vision. Is in the expectations of your heart. He will show up. 
He said, and when they wanted one, the Lord is not shepherd, I shall not want. But they came to a point where they wanted, and the shepherd was there. The wanted and the shepherd was there. When you have want, all you need to do is to look around and discover the presence of the shepherd. When you have want, look around and discover the presence of the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, they have no wine. Somebody began to make an intercession on the other half. They needed Jesus, but they didn't know he was their solution. He was with them, but they couldn't recognize his presence. They preferred to go to the mother when the answer was present. Answer is always with you at every point in time. When you are in the midst of your mess, mercy stands there. Amen. My Bacterius in the midst of his blindness was able to see mercy. He couldn't see anybody else, but he saw mercy. He saw mercy pass by. His eyes were shut. He saw mercy. In the midst of his darkness, his eternal darkness, as a result of blindness, he saw mercy. He said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Somebody's going to look in and see mercy. I don't have it, but I can see something. Even in the midst of my blindness, I can see an answer. Mary walks up to Jesus and said, This guy's got no wine. They don't have wine. They have no wine. So what a way to put a prayer request. Jesus, I've told us, in the principle of receiving miracles from God, you are not here for your much speaking. Enough of the too much grammars in trying to make our prayers colorful. God does not need to be entertained by prayers. Your prayers is not an entertainment medium for God. You're not singing in music. Your prayers is to communicate with God and tell Him what your need is. In fact, if you ever want to talk with somebody who is to meet your need, in the first line of sentence in which you have, make your point known. Don't beat around the bush. Your second sentence, you might not have a listening ear. If you walk up to somebody who is going to listen to you, and say, what's your problem? And you start talking all the stories around and beating around the bush and getting all the fanciful stories. This guy's going to get bored and walk off you. In one sentence, tell God what your needs are. In one sentence, if you want to tell him that his car pass away from me, tell him I'm right. If you want to tell him, nevertheless, not my will be done, but your will be done, tell him I'm right. Mary just walked up to Jesus and said, they have no wine. And she was gone. She didn't hang around. Because she didn't expect a no. Come on, somebody. She didn't expect a no. She just walked up to the president and said, they have no wine. She was gone. I'm done talking. I'm done communicating. I'm done sending the message. While you are there, praying and praying for three hours, Mary has just finished. She has just gone there in one sentence. She said, they've got no wine. That's all I have to say. And she moved. You know, Jesus said to her, what am I to do with thee? My hour has not come. Let's go. You see, the point is, what am I to do with you? It wasn't even Mary's problem. It wasn't Mary's needs. It was not Mary's challenge. Mary was interceding for somebody else. What am I to do with you? In fact, you see, the reason, what I really have, where I have concern with you, is not in this case in you. My time with you has not even come. What do I have to do with you? You see, this is not your meeting. These guys who are there have got to know how to walk into the miraculous themselves. It's one thing for somebody to make intercession for you every day. We build the church system where church folks believe they will never get miracles until the prayer is coming from the pastor. We build a church system that church folks have come to believe that the pastors are the superstars. They are the only one with the right to go to God on the other half. They are the only ones with the right, uh, the pastors and the priests and the prophets and all the evangelists, they are the only ones that can intercede on behalf of the body of Christ. Jesus looked at the person coming to cry on their behalf and said, what am I to do with you? The point is, if you really want to key into the miraculous, these guys have got to learn to do something to key themselves into the miraculous. And so you coming to take their place to make all the intercession for them don't make a difference. You see, Moses went to the presence of God and started crying. Oh God, the Egyptians are coming behind us, the mountains are beside us, and the Red Sea is in front of us. God said to him, why are you crying to me? What are you making noise for? What are you disturbing me? Tell the people 
tell the people that they go forward. You see, the point is the intercession of things you can solve the people's problem by coming to God on behalf of the people. But God looks at the intercession and tells them, you are trying to do it right, but there's something else you're missing. There's something the people have to do to key into the miracles. The principle of God works in that way. It's one thing for the pastor to intercede for you. It's another thing for you to do what you ought to do to key into the miraculous. To qualify for the miraculous. And so Moses had to go to the people in the church and say, Hey, it's time for you all. God says it's time for you all to go forward. So it's not about my prayer strength. You see, when you, when you depend so much on the fact that you have got to be the one interceding for all the miracles that happen for the people, when these miracles don't come, you start taking the blame. You start feeling guilty that you are not faithful enough or you don't have enough faith. Maybe it's your own belief or maybe it's that. They begin to connect. Why is this man born blind? Is it because of the father's sin or the mother's sin? Why is this miracle not happening? Is it because of the pastor's sin or is it because of the evangelist's sin? Why is this blessing not coming? Is it because of this intercessor? He's not praying properly or that intercessor or prayer warrior is not fast when he prayed? But the bottom line is, the people ain't doing what they ought to do. The people are not doing what they ought to do. Tell the people that they go forward. God said to Moses, tell the people that they go forward. And I challenge you today, your miracle will begin when you step up and go forward. When you begin to move forward, when you begin to advance, your blessings will come. Your increase will come. Your abundance will come. He said to the woman, what have I to do with you? If there is a need for a miracle, these people have got to key themselves into it. You see, Mary picked up the signal and Mary understood what was involved in it. And so Mary walked up to the people and said, and his mother said unto the servant, whatsoever he says unto you, do it. You see, he's wanting for me to go and intercede for him to give you wine, but he has just made me understand he has no time for me. He has no time for me. I'm, I'm the intercession, but you see, if this miracle has got to happen, you who need the miracle has got to step up and do something. You've got to do something. So whatever he says to you, do it. The principle that Mary left for them for the miraculous is do what he says. You've got to do what the Lord says, do. Do what he says. And yeah, there's somebody interceding. Somebody has just made a prayer for you. Good. But when you step up from that place, get up doing what he says. If he says give, give. If he says pray, pray. If he says you rise up and walk, rise up and walk. If he says move, you move. What he says you should do should be what you do. You've got to learn to give in and do what he says you do. His mother walked up to the shamans and said to them, Listen, whatever he says to you, get up and do it. Scripture says that they had six water pots of stones there. This was it. The manner of purification of the Jews, they had this water pots. Because they two or three shekels apiece or packets apiece. And so this is one of us were there staring down the face. The very instruments connected. You see, God wants to let you understand that even your biggest miracle can come from the simplest thing, from the smallest thing. The most significant miracle in your life can happen with the most insignificant thing in your head. Your biggest red sea doesn't need, doesn't need a big bar to divide. It only needs a piece of wood, a simple rod. To split it open. The hardest rock doesn't need a big drill to get water out of it, only needs a rod in the hands of Moses. The biggest wildest serpent that can swallow multiple serpents doesn't need an a, a, a anaconda skin to get into a hole, it doesn't need the charms of, of oculus to, to begin to get to, to grow. He doesn't need those red oculus to grow. No, what it needs is only that simple rod in the hands of Moses. A simple piece of wood, an insignificant object, is what God often uses to provide significant miracles in the life of His people. That's why you've got to learn to respect the little things around you. Whatsoever He says to you do, as insignificant as the thing might be, if He instructs you to use it, use it. If He instructs you to walk with it, walk with it. If He leads you to put it to walk, put it to walk. If He leads you to do something about it, do something about it. As we get this vision started, we get this vision started using the little insignificant space with the little insignificant stools and little insignificant chairs and little insignificant objects it doesn't have to be recognized by people the six water pots were ignored the six water pots were not considered as objects of miracles the six water pots were not considered as anything that can solve the problem of the people 
The six were poles were not contained, considered as unique miracle vessels or stuff. They were only for cleansing and for purification. But when Jesus showed up, he said, fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the rim. Because Mary said, when he says to you, do it. What he says, do it. He said, fill these water pots. Fill this ignored water pots. Fill this insignificant water pots. Fill this misused and abused and rejected and left aside water pots. Fill them up with water. Put water in it. It's meant to hold water. Put water in it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Fill them up with water. Oh, hallelujah. God is about to put something in the little you. Amen. In your little hands, in your little skill. Amen. Your little idea. Amen. That ability, those things that you think about. God is about to visit you up with something. And they will do it. They will make it happen in the life of somebody. Amen. All you need to do is tell yourself to follow the principle of the miraculous. And that principle is if you ever know what he says you should do, do it. If you ever hear him say do something, do it. If you ever feel led that he is leading you to do something, do it. If you ever get motivated that he's challenging you to do something, do it. He said to them, two things. The first thing he said, fill it with water, and they filled it with water. That looks easy. He said a lot of times it gives you assignments that are easy. Things that don't challenge your moral belief, don't challenge your education. He gives you revelation that don't challenge your education. But soon after, he's going to give you revelation that challenges your education. Yeah, he's going to do that. He starts with easy. He starts with, he starts with soft. He says you put water in a water pot. What's so different? What's so difficult in putting water in a water pot? It's a regular thing. What's so abnormal with putting water in a water pot? What's so abnormal in rising up and walking? What's so abnormal in taking up your bed to walk? What's abnormal is when you're saying to a lame man. Yeah. What's, that? What's abnormal when you tell somebody, get up, move? It's when you're saying to a blind man. What's abnormal when you say, rise up and walk? What's abnormal about it? It's when you're saying to somebody who has never walked from his bed. So there are easy things when Jesus talks to easy things. But there are some of those other easy things he gives us. But they challenge what we already know. They challenge what we already function with. They challenge our belief system. He said, throw out now. Bear unto the governor of the feast. Look at the next line. And they bear it. He said, fill the water pot. They could understand why. Water pots should hold water. They did it. But when it came to the point, he told them, Take from that water pot and don't give to the governor. No, no, don't give to the servant. Don't give to the little people. Don't, don't take, don't take familiar risk. Don't take. You see, when you're looking for the miracles, a lot of us want to take safe risk. We want to take safe risk. You know when this work started, I told myself and I said, "Hey, I'm draining the whole account." And boy, I did it to the last bit of it. Some of the things in which I have to do with the account, some of us have no idea. The adverts, the publicities, and all that, the accounts we ran on Facebook, a couple of things that we ran. I locked on the phones. Because if you want to have success in life in following Christ, it wouldn't always work when you just go to taking only safe risk. I have a thousand naira, I go and give 50, that's taking safe risk. The woman who came when the whole of her living was taking complete risk. That was faith. Faith risk is bigger than safe risk. Faith risk. She came, she gave the whole of her living. The mites she put in church should have bought her her bread. The mites she put in church should have fed her for the weekend. The mites she put in church but she took a faith risk. You always get out of the abundance. Out of the abundance, they gave a safe risk. The Zerophite widow, Elijah said, give it to me to eat first. And she took a faith risk. A safe risk will be giving out a plate of food out of the kitchen where you have plates of food. Safe risk. Give it to the children to test if it looks like wine and it tastes like wine. Give it to those slave guys there. Give it to one of the visitors. Jesus said, if you start taking safe risk all the time, 
You won't step violently into your miracle. You won't step boldly into the miraculous. If you ever want to have the Red Sea divine, walk into it. Stretch your hands towards it and start going towards it. Move forward into it. If you ever want to have a miraculous, you have to be bold enough. If you ever want to kill a giant, you've got to stand before that Goliath and face it, challenge it, and go for it. Saul was taking safe risk. He was in the palace wanting to kill a giant. He was hiding in the palace wanting to kill a giant. Then he took faith risk. He was in the battlefield challenging the giant. Two people. When David tried safe risk, he stayed in the palace when kings went for war. He got himself in a mess. Safe risk ain't safe at all. Safe risk ain't safe. Faith risk. Yeah, those ones are. When you disregard the limitations of what is going to happen and you step out boldly, disregarding what? What am I going to eat today? Sometimes I really don't care. So I told people, I said, oh, I hear stories like there are no food in the house, there is no food in the house, yet everybody's eating every time. What a, what a way to complain. When you're eating and there is no food, Oh, you know, there are no big bags of rice in the storehouses. There are no big... You don't want to live only by safe risk. What about your faith risk? They gave it to the governor. And when the ruler of the feast had tested the water, not tested the wine, when he tested the water, so as of the point it was given to him, it was still water in the cup. You see, it remained water until Christ was sure they were ready. The Bible said, and they bear it. Which means they were still in the process of going to hand it over to the governor. At the point of putting it in the governor's hand, it was still water. At the point of the governor bringing it close to his mouth, it was still water. At the time he tested it with his tongue, the Bible still qualified it as water. But the Bible said, had tested the water that was made wine. The moment he tested water made wine, he knew not whence it was. At the time of encounter, when your faith is complete, he said, let patience have a perfect walk, that you will be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. You follow God in the process, no matter how challenging it might be. God has been around 12 years. Why is the miracle? This thing is still looking like water. Start drinking it. You will discover that by your faith, it was already made wine. By your belief, it looks like water in the cup. It's already been made wine by your faith. It's your faith that made it wine. Not the color you see in the cup. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In the surface, he said, but the servant who drew the water knew. At that point, the Bible was still referring it to water. Not the servant who drew the wine. The young man still knew what he was carrying in his cup was water. The servant knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom. Someone that was not even connected to the miracle. And said to him, every man at the beginning of the earth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. It was the governor of the feast that added an adjective to the miracle. Good. You know, every time God does something, people find good in it. In the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. God saw. God saw that it was good. God saw that it was good. God saw that it was good. It is not a God making if it goodness is not found in it. If good is not found in it, it is not God's thing. And then this man said, this is good wine. Maybe it's a God wine. Good wine means it's a wine made by God. It doesn't mean good wine means it's the sugary. Because there are some wines that might be bitter in taste or sour in taste, but they are better than some of the sugary ones. So good wine don't mean sweet wine. Good wine means it's a God made wine. It's a wine made by God. God is the maker of good. And may God begin to make things in your life. 
Amen. And God begins to make good in your life. Amen. And God begins to make good things happen in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And in conclusion to that scripture, the Bible said, This video of miracles that Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. And we pray that our faith today will begin to walk. The principle on ground today is whatsoever he says unto you, do it. It might still look like wine in your cup. It might look like the miracle is never going to happen. But already when you, if you believe it, your faith makes it wine before you test it. Your faith makes it wine before you ever drink it. It's your faith. It's your faith. It's your faith that brings good out of that water and makes it a good wine. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We will intercede. We will pray today. But in it all, don't forget and don't fail to realize this one reality and this one truth. Whatever he says to you, do it. Your miracle is just a principle, the way. If you follow the simple principle, you'll be walking in the miraculous. Let us pray. Blessed God, hallelujah, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody's only got water here. Somebody's got insignificant water pot. Somebody's got a need and a demand. Somebody's got a longing. Somebody's got a desire. Somebody's got a plan. And Somebody's got a longer hope. Somebody's needing a miracle. Somebody needs a blessing. Somebody needs an increase. Somebody has a vision and an idea. Somebody's got a plan in something that he believes God has to enlarge. God has to expand, has to increase, has to make food. And make, oh, somebody here in this place has got a need. It's got a want it. It's got a, it's got a goal. Somebody, just matter what it is you want. That insignificant plan in goal, that water pot, that's a few water into it. Put your faith in it. Come on, somebody. Put your faith in that water pot. Put the little you've got. Put that little you've got. That insignificant little you've got. God is about to look in it and put goodness. And add goodness to that plan. And add goodness to that dream. Add goodness to that desire. Add goodness to that very longing of your heart. There is a lacking. There is a void. There is too much copy. There is too much imitation. You are not doing what you have to do. You are doing what someone else had to do. You are doing what someone has been instructed to do. You are doing what other people have been told to do. What have you to do? Paul said, Lord, what would you have me to do? And Jesus said, go, and I will show you what you must do. It's a standard principle. It cannot be voided. It cannot be voided. It cannot be faulted. It cannot be faulted. The sons of Issachar were those who commanded their generation. For they knew what Israel must do. They were the ones sensitive to God hearing what Israel must do. And that's why they commanded generations. Because they knew what had to be done. Whatsoever he says unto you, do it. There is power. There is miracle in knowing what to do. May you know what to do. May he bring you to the place where you get to know what to do. And do what you ought to do. And do what you have to do. And do what you should do. And do what you must do. Anything that will take the place of King Hosea in our life at this moment, let's open our mouths and begin to pray that the Lord would, 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 would take away that thing from our lives. Anything that wants to take the place of King Hosea, anything that wants to sit on a throne and, uh, over our lives, anything that wants to take a position, uh, take a, a big position in our lives that is not supposed to be there, and it's not supposed to have place in us, and it's not supposed to have a hand in us, let's start and start to pray that the Lord should take them for whatever it may be. It may be, it may be Maybe barrier from the evil one, maybe may be, may be barrier from our, our, our neighbors, can maybe be barrier from our, our colleagues at office, it may be anything that wants to sit as a king, it may be a boss for us, it may be our Lord, it may be anybody that is in a superior position ahead of us that wants to sit as a king over our lives. Let's pray that the 
Lord shall take it out, so that we shall have the opportunity to see and see for her in the name of Jesus. Lord, everything that wants to lift up is a standard, that wants to lift up the only head against us, Lord, this moment. According to your word, Lord, we come against it this day, and we pray this day that you, O oh Lord, shall kill that that wants to stand as an obstacle in our life, that wants to sit as a king in our life, that wants to take the place of you in our life. We pray on this day that you shall take away that sin and take it for us in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let's begin to pray that after the Lord has taken us, whatever thing that wants to stand against us, that our eyes of enlightenment shall be open. Our eyes shall be open. Because in the realm of the spirit, where your eyes is open, that is when you can hear from the Lord. That is not, it doesn't work as it works in the, in the realm of the physical. In the realm of the physical, you need your ear to hear. But in the realm of the spirit, you need your eyes to be open so that you can hear from the Lord. And so you open your mouth and begin to pray. And it shall open our eyes. You shall open our eyes. Our so that we shall understand that that he wants us to do. That he, we shall understand and we shall see him in the glory of his goodness. And we shall know his plan. And we shall have a sense of leadership, a sense of direction, a, 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 a sense of going forward. That we shall see clearly. That the Lord shall open our eyes. That we shall open our eyes. That we should take away whatever skill that was in our eyes. That we should take away whatever skill that this world that was hindering us. And we shall take away one of our skills uh, that was stopping us. Uh, and we shall take away one of our skills uh, and shall give us direction. Uh, and we shall give us direction. Uh, and the spirit shall be in us to take us from place, from the place where we are to the place where we ought to be. And we shall take us from the place where we are to the place where we ought to be. Now this prayer is not only for us. So when the righteous prospers, the city rejoices. But when the wicked pray, there are shouts of joy. Let's begin to pray for our nation. For those things that have been sitting as kings uh, and be hindering our nation, uh, that the Lord God Almighty should take it out from us uh, and we should make us uh, and, and give us a righteous leader and give us some people that are after his heart, uh, people that can lead us after his heart. Uh. Let's be to intercede for our country, for our nation, for our, for our country, Nigeria. And the Lord shall give us righteous leaders uh, that shall lead us after his will, that shall lead us after his footsteps, uh, that shall lead us after his precepts. Uh, and they shall lead us after the ways of the Lord. The Lord shall give us righteous leaders. Leaders that have the fear of God. Leaders that, 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 will, that will walk for God. That will walk for God. That, that, will, that will not sit as things and praises over our lives. That will not sit as, as things and praises over our success. Let's pray for our nations. Let's pray for our nations. Let's pray for our nations. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Don't go to my that our nation. Our nation shall be God. By you, and our nation shall be ruled by you. And the Lord that you should place us and will lead us after your heart in our nation. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Right here in the part of the world where we are, there are many people that believe that the ember months are months for death, months for destruction. But as children of God, we believe that the Abraham months are months for prosperity. They are months for blessings. They are months for achievement. Let's see this moment now and begin to pray that after the Lord has opened our eyes to, to have direction, that He shall lead us to the places of fulfillment, that He shall lead us to the places of abundance, that He shall lead us to the places of prosperity, that He shall lead us to the places of success, that He shall lead us to the places of establishment in the name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, that you shall prepare that you shall prepare a table in the presence of our enemies, and you shall appoint our exploits and our cups shall run over. That the goodness of God shall always be with us. That Lord, that no plan of the evil one shall be able to take preeminence over our lives. That we shall be in a state of constant acceleration. That we shall be in a state of constant moving forward. That we shall be in a state of constant advancement. That we shall be in a state of constant achievement in the name of Jesus. That as we come to the end of the year, Lord, that you shall bring to pass whatever you have promised us from the beginning of the year that we do not achieve. That you shall bring to pass whatever you have ordained 
Kings of the world trying to sleep on. I pray that you shall bring the God of us into our life. That whatever you are proposed for your house now, that whatever you are proposed for us, that you shall bring your God of us into our life. That you shall bring your God of us into our life. That you shall bring your God of us into our life. That you shall bring your God of us into our life. That you shall bring your God of us into our life. That you shall bring your God of us into our life. That you shall bring your God of us into our life. That you shall bring your God of us into our life. That you shall bring your God of us into our life. That you shall bring your God of us into our life. That you shall bring your God of us into our life. That you shall bring your God of us into our life. That you shall bring your God of us into our life. That you shall bring your God of us into our life. That you shall bring your God of us into our life. That you shall bring your God of us into our life. That you shall bring your God of us into our life. That you shall bring your God of us into our life. That you shall bring your God of us into our life. That you shall bring your God of us into our life. That you shall bring your God of us into our life. That you shall bring your God of us into our life. That you shall bring your God of us into our life. That you shall bring your God of us into our life. Shall be in the fulfillment in our lives in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, let's thank the Lord for answering our prayers. Because before we even ask, He has answered our prayers. Before we even ask of Him, He has granted all the petitions which we ask of Him. He has granted all the desires which we ask of Him. We have answered us. He has answered us even the things that we know not, but that we that He knows that are good for us. Let's thank Him for making these things to come to pass in our life. Father, we bless you. We give you glory because we know that with you. All things are possible. With you, you shall bring to pass all that you have proposed in our life. And no plan of the enemy, no plan of the evil one shall be able to stop us. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we are free. Amen. Amen.